Hi everybody, in this video today I am going to talk about sleeping and the relationship between posture and sleeping. Um, I get asked lots of questions about the best sleeping position um, and I tend to find that lots of my clients have many difficulties sleeping. Of course, there can be mental reasons why you might not be sleeping well, you might be suffering insomnia, but if you are suffering from chronic pain, you will likely or probably find that at some point you'll notice that your hip hurts you in the night or the sh your shoulder hurts you in the night or you have difficulty kind of moving from side to side. So I wanted to do a uh, more updated video on the topic of sleeping. I've done one before but I thought I would expand a little bit more and as ever I've got a few notes written down as to things I want to say but who knows how long I'm going to speak for. Uh, so here we go. So Thing number one that we have to consider when it comes to sleeping is that human bodies are not designed to sleep on the types of beds that we sleep on today. So we have all, in the world that I live in anyway, lived our entire lives sleeping on soft mattresses, soft bedding, and with feather pillows. Humans are not designed for this. Humans are designed to sleep on um, pretty much like the hard floor. There may have been a protective layer of something like hay or grass, uh, just to kind of warm up the ground and things like that. But certainly our bodies have not evolved to be kept on these big, squishy, soft um, beds and pillows for multiple hours of the day or night. Uh, for every single day of our lives. So it's a little bit like the same kind of argument um, as to why our cushion supportive shoes are not appropriate for our feet. The more that we cushion the human body, the weaker the human body becomes. Cushioning may well feel comfortable, but cushioning gives the body the capacity to relax and to allow the muscles to melt into a puddle. The more that we are keeping our bodies uncomfortable, uh, challenging our bodies against hard surfaces and gravity, the stronger our body has to be to fight back against those forces. So sleeping on the ground, keeps you moving throughout the night. So you'd be kind of probably tossing and turning a little bit more when you're sleeping on the ground because it's harder to just sink into one position and melt into a puddle like it is in our beds. But also our bodies would just be stronger because we are sleeping on the ground. So we would be more resilient because our body has never had that chance to melt into a puddle if we have been sleeping on harder beds. So I do think it's really important to understand the context of what our bodies have evolved to do. We are sleeping in beds and with duvets and with pillows that are absolutely not natural for the human body whatsoever. Our beds fundamentally weaken our bodies and you can get angry about it uh, to me if you want but that is the truth and until we can kind of see this truth and see things for what they are we're not going to be able to change things so we have to be able to admit that to ourselves. Our primitive ancestors did not sleep in beds like we do now. Our beds are part of our postural problem and I will um, elaborate on that a, a little bit more in, in a bit. So one thing I would say is that if you are suffering pain at night time, in my opinion, one of the best things that you can do is start to take away some of that cushioning from yourself. So you might have a really, really saggy or um, sort of memory foam type mattress. If you have a very pliable mattress that shapes itself to your body, what's happening is you're not getting any force against your body. And it is that force against your body that helps your body to hold itself into um, a strong position. It's gonna keep your muscles like challenged throughout the night. So if you're having massive difficulty sleeping due to um, like physical pain, please consider your mattress. But the irony of it is, is that my advice would be the absolute opposite of what you'll probably get if you were to go to like a bed store and speak to one of the um, helpers there. 
You don't want soft, squishy beds. You don't want memory foam beds because if you're going down that route, you're actually weakening your body more and more. You're pandering to the weakness that's there. The body is going to become weaker and weaker, the softer and softer the bed is, and you'll probably find that you end up with more problems further down the line. I went to go and buy a mattress a couple of years ago and I didn't end up getting one, but I went into the shop and the guy was trying to sell me like a 3,000 pound memory foam, high technology mattress that was gonna contour itself to my body and all this fancy stuff. The technology was ridiculous. And I was like, listen, I don't want any of this stuff. I want the hardest bed that you have. I don't want memory foam. I want the hardest, most kind of, you know, springy, but by springy, I don't mean that it absorbs my body weight. The springs are fighting back against me. And those beds were significantly cheaper. And in my opinion, they are the ones that we should be going for. The less technology in your bed, the less technology in your shoes, the less technology with anything really, the more healthier or the healthier your body is going to be, the stronger your body is going to be. So do consider what mattress you're sleeping on and how this might be having an impact on your muscles and on your joints possibly the opposite way to what you think would be good, if that makes sense. Secondly, please consider your pillows. So for lots of people, they're spending the entire night with their head propped forwards in this forward head posture. So not only are we spending all of our time on our computers with this like bowling ball weight head sagging forwards of our shoulder girdle like this, turning us into that rounded upper back position. But if we're sleeping with two, three pillows or whatever, we're also doing the same thing to our head um, during the night. So sleeping without pillows or certainly moving towards reducing your pillows um, would be a really nice way of giving your body a chance to reset your head at nighttime. Um, it's my opinion, and lots of what I'm about to say, by the way, it is an opinion just based off theory, logic, experience, I don't know. But it's my opinion that our body has been designed to like reset itself at nighttime. So we're on our feet most of the day. If we were hunter-gatherers, we'd be moving lots. We probably still have our heads like in front of our shoulders for big portions of time, even you know many thousands of years ago. However, back in the day, our body had the chance to reset itself at nighttime. So if we weren't sleeping on these cushioned beds, and if we didn't have pillows, our head would move back in the duration of the night time and our hips and our bodies would almost have a chance to kind of work to fight back against gravity and the force of the ground underneath and underneath us so sleeping in my opinion was is could still be if we changed a few things um, an opportunity for the body to reset itself after everything it's done during the day so do consider your pillows as well um, if you're very stiff through your hips and through your neck it's probably not going to be a question of just going cold turkey and getting rid of your pillows because if your body is really stiff through your hips and through your neck it's really going to struggle um, as the pillows are taken away, your body's got so used to that support that to take the support away would put a little bit too much demand possibly on the upper back. But if you can get rid of your pillows or at least get rid of one pillow or make your pillows a bit um, lower, you may well find that you wake up feeling more refreshed in the morning because your head's had an opportunity to reset itself. So just some things to think about in terms of how our bedding is different to what our body has evolved to sleep on and how our bedding may be working kind of directly against our posture in the night. I also wanted to touch upon the chicken and egg scenario of posture and sleeping. So I mentioned at the beginning that lots and lots and lots of my clients, when they first start doing posture work, and um, when they first come to me, one of the biggest kind of problems that they have is that they have a real difficulty sleeping um, because of physical pain. They just can't get comfortable. They're always shifting. As I said, hips hurt, shoulders hurt, arms go dead, that type of thing in the nighttime. And what I will say is that the more that you focus on working on your posture outside of your sleeping, so the more that you can prioritize doing 
30 minutes of posture every morning, what you are going to do is to bring your, uh, your joints, your bones back into better alignment. You're going to be more balanced. You're going to take friction out of the joints. You're going to put that power back into the muscles where it belongs, which means that your joints can hold themselves more comfortably. The stronger your body is, which translates into, by the way, the better your posture is. So the more mobile you are, the more strength that you have, the more functional your body is in a physical kind of muscular way, the better you are going to be able to hold yourself together through the night. So if your muscles are performing well, and if they are being stimulated sufficiently during the day, when it comes to laying still for eight hours of the night, or however long it is, your body is just going to be more it's just gonna hold itself together more. So you're going to very quickly, when you first start doing posture exercises, notice that you're sleeping a lot better. It's one of the first bits of feedback that I can get from people. Oh, Ellie, I've done my posture exercises half an hour every day for a week, and I'm so happy to announce that for the first time in 10 years, I've slept through the night, um, and I haven't been woken up due to my chronic pain. And that is the magic of better posture. Do your posture outside of your sleeping time, your body will hold itself together better when you are sleeping and you will be sleeping better. But on the flip side, and back to this like chicken and egg thing, the way that you are sleeping is also going to really impact your posture. So I don't personally believe in saying to people, this is how you should sleep, this is the best sleeping position, um, I don't really think that's particularly helpful. I don't think there is such thing as like the best sleeping position um, or telling people how they should be sleeping. I think it depends on how you are the most comfortable. But I do think it's useful to have an awareness of how your sleeping position will imprint itself in your muscles and therefore how you move outside of your sleeping time. So for me, I set my thumb, my left thumb, and I often sleep really crunched in a kind of fetal position on my right hand side. And the more that I've just delved into this work and thought about it, the more it really makes sense to me as to like why my kind of rounded hunchy shoulders and tight arms are one of the top things that I'm dealing with when it comes to like undoing my posture and bringing myself back to balance. If I'm spending eight hours of the night in a curled up fetal position with my shoulders rounding in, laying on my right hand side, but with my left thumb in my mouth, elbows heavily bent, is it any wonder that when I stand up and live my normal life that my shoulders are still hunched and my elbows are quite bent and tight? Not really, because I'm spending like, half of my time in life in this type of position. So something I've really tried consciously to do, maybe in the last like six months or so, is to try and sleep on my back. Um, so I'm very much a right side fetal sleeper and that's imbalanced. You know, I'm not sleeping on the left hand side in the same way. So that propensity for me to always go to the right hand side, always sleep on my right arm, always have my left hand in my mouth, the same pattern that I'm doing while staying very still for long periods of time is etching itself into my muscles. It's becoming a part of my movement profile, even though I'm not doing very much movement at all in that moment or in those hours that I'm being like that. So for the last few years, um, last few months, I have really consciously tried to fall asleep in a different position. Um, getting rid of pillows has really helped, and I'm gonna talk a bit more about this in a second. But if you have loads of pillows under your head, it's incredibly easy to sleep on your side. So again, it's, this is how the pillows can kind of haunt us and create more problems. If we didn't have pillows, and if we didn't have cushioned beds, we would find it really difficult to sleep on our sides, I think. This is one of these things that's like based on just logic rather than like scientific data or evidence. This is just logical to me. We're meant to sleep on hard floors with a minimal amount of like protection against the elements, say hay or grass or um, just a very, very, very firm sort of wooden mattress with maybe some um, grasses and hay on top of it instead. If we're meant to sleep on hard beds or hard or the hard ground, it would be really difficult to sleep on our sides because it would be so uncomfortable to do that. Our beds 
allow us to sleep on our sides. And I think it is side sleeping that leads to, not necessarily leads to, but feeds into and doesn't help people's postural problems. If I am sleeping on my side all night with my knees kind of tucked into my chest, I am keeping myself in hip flexion, which is the same as what I'm doing all day when I'm sat at a desk or in my car or on the sofa. When we're sat down, we're in hip flexion. We've got that like tight hip position. And if we're sleeping on our sides in a fetal position, we're doing that all throughout the night. If we're sleeping on one side, it's an incredibly imbalanced motion. The shoulders are rolling in and our heads are kind of cocked at funny angles. I don't believe we would sleep like that if we didn't have our mattresses and our pillows allowing that to happen. I think if someone said to you, sleep, you've got to sleep on this hard wooden floor that you can see in my video, you're not going to be sleeping on your side on that overnight. You'd, you'd be sleeping either on your front or on your back. And what happens when we sleep on our front and on our back is it allows our hips to relax off during the night. So sleeping prone, face down, or sleeping on our back, supine, allows the hips to lengthen and to stretch off in the nighttime. And I think this comes back to where I was saying about how I think that sleeping was designed as this chance for the body to reset itself if we are laying in the right positions to do so. And like I said, I don't wanna say what's right or wrong. I'm here just theorizing with what makes sense to me. But I believe that since I have got rid of my pillows, so I tend to fall asleep with no pillow at all. And then at some point in the night, I'll often pick up one of the pillows. But I've really got myself in the habit now of kind of subconsciously self-correcting and coming to lay on my back. And when I lay on my back without the pillow, my head is able to move back, my shoulders are able to open and pull back behind me, and my hips are able to lengthen and extend as well. So it's undoing what happens when we spend all of this time in a chair, and I feel so good for it as well. Like I really, I wake up in the morning feeling I don't wake up particularly feeling stiff um, and I don't have any pain when I wake up, but I just feel better when I wake up having sleeping on my back, having been sleeping on my back. And another thing that I like doing is as I fall asleep, I put my hands behind my head and interlink my hands like this. And that just helps to kind of flatten my palms and get them out of the clawy text posture. It also helps to open up my chest and my upper back. And I've also started falling asleep with like my hands underneath my bum and the weight of my bum helps my hands to kind of spread and flatten as well. And as my hands change and flatten, it also helps open up my shoulders and um, the front of my chest. So I've been playing around with a few different ways of thinking about how I sleep, how I fall asleep, and I'm certainly noticing a difference for it. I hope this video has given you some kind of things to at least think about, if not something tangible to do. I can't tell you, throw out your pillows or change your mattress or sleep like this or sleep like that. However, if you are so inclined to consider this as a possibility, um, your sleeping position as something that is very likely to be having a massive bearing on your posture, but also how your posture will be having a massive bearing on your sleeping too, chicken and egg, then give it some thought. Maybe it is worth you changing things up a bit, trying to sleep in a slightly different position, trying to take the pillows away so you're less inclined to sleep on your side and all that type of thing. Um, I've certainly found it helpful and I'm sure other people would find it helpful if they explored that way. But what I would say is that getting to sleep is really important. So I don't think that you should make these changes if it makes your sleep quality worse. I don't think it's a good idea to get rid of your pillows if that results in more lower back pain for you. I don't think you should try and sleep on your back if it means that you like don't get to sleep because it feels too alien. Um, I think sleep quality has to be your priority, but you may well find that your sleep quality improves by trying to change some of these things. But what I can say for sure is that if you have problems sleeping due to chronic pain, and if you try and remove a pillow or sleep a bit differently and your pain gets worse, 
What that's telling you is that you need to do posture exercises outside of your time sleeping. So by prioritizing that like half an hour of posture exercises, three, four, five, six, seven times a week, you will start sleeping better. I can tell you that hand on heart, absolute dead certainty. The better your posture is, the more your muscles can hold your bones together in the positions that they are supposed to be held in, the better you will sleep. Um, so yeah, there's my little spiel. I hope that was helpful. I hope you do get a good night's sleep and I hope that there's some, been something in here for you to take away and uh, think about.